Hello and welcome to this week's lab. So this week we will learn get familiar with AWS S3. Uh, AWS S3 is an online storage service. It is also the uh, data lake solution on uh, AWS. So this week we are going to learn how we can upload data to S3. And we also will try to enable the versioning uh, so that uh, it can keep different versions of our data that we uploaded to S3. We can use S3 for multiple purposes like uh, storage or stored data, uh, support data analytics. We can also host a very simple website on S3. So today we will also see how we can do that. So the data we are going to use is provided on this um, GitHub page. So you need to download all those files. So, the first, so we have two HTML files, one logo image, and also one robot text uh, txt file. Uh, so if you go to this uh, GitHub and click the the single file, and right click the raw and save that one. So we save that into our downloads file. Okay, and we repeat this one for all the other three files. So raw, and then save link as, and save that into the downloads folder. So those are very simple. And those two HTML are two very simple uh, HTML files. We also have a logo image, and we also have a robust txt file. So the robust txt file is used on website to direct that how the search engine should a handle to search crawl your website. Okay, so let's download all those three files to our uh, downloads folder, so to our local computer. We also need uh, this public S3 policy, which is on um, AWS website. So make sure that you find out that policy and we'll, we will use that policy later. And the next, we'll go to our AWS Educate Classroom. From there, we go to this classroom console, and then we move on to S3. So if you cannot find out S3 here, you can just simply type S3. And that is a simple uh, uh, storage service. And if this is your first time to use S3, so it is, uh, you should have an empty, uh, you should have zero buckets. So bucket is a logic container where you can organize and store your data. And let's create our first bucket. And remember that for the bucket, the name must be globally unique. So it is very hard to give a very to have a very good uh, bucket name. So here I call it TCH229E, that's a cost name, dash lab six dash demo. And hopefully that bucket is available. If not, and you can just add some random uh, letters or numbers after this name. Here we can choose a region. So let's keep use the default one that keep using the default one that is US East one. Uh, for this access settings, so because we want to host a website, so let's uncheck block all public access. Okay, so that is for our lab. So uh, depending on the uh, purpose of your bucket, so you may not, you may want to keep your resources private. So if that is a case, you may want to check this box. So block all public access. Again, we want to host a public website. So we want to uncheck. And here we acknowledge this setting. We also want to enable the versioning so that when we save the multiple versions of single data set, all the versions will be kept and all the versions will uh, cost your credits. So all the versions will be uh, built towards the usage. And finally, so if everything looks right, so let's create this bucket. Okay, so it looks like uh, this bucket name is available. So we have our uh, first bucket that's been created. So now let's click this bucket. 
and we can upload the files. Uh, so it's just like we upload files to OneDrive, uh, Dropbox, etc. So we click upload. And here you can select uh, from where you want to add files or if you want to add folders. So let's add our first file. And that is a file that we downloaded from GitHub. So let's add this logo.png file. So that is an image. And we open it. And we upload this image. You can also change the permissions and also properties, etc. So let's upload this one. And now you can see it is success. So if you click uh, this image on this S3 bucket, you can see the S3 URI. So that is when you want to access this image in your, for example, your machine learning tools, etc. And you also have this object URL. So object URL is where if you want to view this one and also share this one with others. So for example, if now we click this URL and we get this error. So our bucket can be public, but we still haven't set the bucket to be public yet. So that's why we have this error. So to, to be able to view the image via that URL, we need to change the permissions. Let's go to permissions. That will change permission for this uh, image. And we say edit. And let's give it the read permission to everyone to read this object to everyone. And let's acknowledge that setting and save change. So now we give this a uh, public read permission to everyone, to anyone that uh, in the, from the internet. So now we click this URL. So we are able to view this URL. And you can also view this one in the private mode. Uh, so for example, if I uh, copy this URL and in this private mode, and paste that URL, and you can see you're able to view this uh, image. Okay, so this URL is public to anyone. Okay, uh, next, let's try uh, how the versioning works. So let's go back to the bucket, and now we can see we have this one image. So let's upload the exactly the same image one more time. So let's say upload, add file, and let's add the local image and let's say upload uh, because they are exactly the same image so if we go to the bucket we can see there's still one image but because we enabled the version versioning so now if you see click show versions and we are able to see the the previous image that we uploaded okay and also the current version, so the latest image that we uploaded. So this is extremely helpful that you don't worry about overwrite. Um, and also if you are working on a project that you want to keep different versions, so S3 will keep those versions. And remember that both objects, so in this case, it counts for two objects in your bucket. So it may look like just one, but it actually counts for two objects. So you have to pay for storage of the both uh, images. Okay, so that is versioning. Uh, next, let's upload the other files uh, to this bucket. So let's upload. And here, let's upload the error HTML, index HTML, and robots.txt file. So we upload all those three files. And we go back to the bucket. So now we have all, all, all of the three files. So to enable that as a, a public website, we still need to change the permission. So we go to permissions. Uh, so here we see, okay, so we block, we uncheck the block public access. And uh, you can also change the ACL, access control list. Uh, however, if you want to make this one to be public, the entire bucket to be public, the best way is to using the bucket policy. So bucket policy allow you to change the access at individual object level or at the entire 
bucket level. So here, let's copy an example of the public bucket policy uh, from AWS. So let's copy this one. And we go back to our uh, bucket policy. And we see edit. And here we paste that policy. And remember that we need to change uh, the resource value to our bucket ARN. So let's copy the ARN and replace, put that one into the resource slash star. So that means everything within this bucket will be public. Okay. And now let's save, let's save the change. And once everything is ready, so you can see you have this uh, right uh, icon that says that this bucket is public. Okay, so now everything that you put in this uh, bucket will be public. So for example, if now we go to the projects and we click this index HTML and we open this object URL. Okay, so now we are able to see um, this HTML. However, we want to host that one, this bucket as a, a simple website. So we don't want to click the each individual index. Uh, so we want to use the index that defined on those HTML files. So we can host this bucket as a website as well. So to do that, let's go to the properties. And in the properties, we go to the uh, bottom. And here we can see we can enable this static website hosting. So let's do that. So let's edit. And we're going to enable uh, this static web hosting. And we just host a static website. And here, so this will, that's, so here you will understand why we need those index HTML and those arrow HTML. So index HTML is the default page of the website. And this arrow dot HTML is, uh, is to handle errors. So for example, if there are some pages that are not found, and they will go to this arrow web page. And we don't need to define this redirection rules. So let's save the change. And once that is set, we go to the bottom and we are, we were able to see the bucket website endpoint. So that is a website, the URL of our website. So let's open that. Okay. So now we have this URL of our website and we can view this, uh, website that contain that image. And if you type something that does not exist, okay, so that will direct you to this error page that we predefined. So that will show this error page. 